I think it's about time we do some investigation into this bounder. I've gotten a data logger for the chair. I want to keep track of the battery voltage, the charging, the amperage, all that stuff. This thing is, it's sort of what similar to what they use for FPV drone racing, where on the display it tells you how many amp hours and watt hours and all that have been consumed. This one though is bi-directional, so it'll tell you how much has gone in through the charger and how much is going out with the load or driving the chair. And it'll extrapolate time remaining based at current uh, amperage out and voltage and things like that. But before we get this hooked up, I wanna see if I can open this lithium battery. I'm really curious to see what's inside of it, what the cells look like, and what kind of battery management they're using inside there. Because there's gotta be something, and just in my mind, I mean, I know these batteries are safe, they've never had an issue with them, but I'm just curious what's going on inside there. I do not know, however, if it is possible to open these in a non-destructive manner. So we're gonna try that. I've already removed the lid, and this is part of the data logging assembly that I put on here. It looks like, oh, is this metal? Okay, so this battery is in a metal box. Oh, wait. Looks like there's some labels down there. Okay, um, let me grab some stuff and let's see if we can get that thing pulled out of there and see what's going on. I'm super interested in this. Gotten everything disconnected here. We've got our uh, freeway flashlight that I repaired in a previous video. Oh, come on, work with me. This thing's been working perfectly until just now. What the heck? There we go. All right. Um, let's see here. Ooh, there's some information. Life Po 4, 25.6, 100 amp hour. Uh, looks like these screws are a little bit stripped out, like someone's been in here monkeying around. Let's uh, Let's continue investigating here. Well, here we have a lithium battery pack. Looks like one of our screws here is already loose. You can see that kind of sticking out there. Um, appears to be in some sort of box. Oh. There's our uh, regulatory and or voltage information. It looks like this end comes off. Uh, all right, let's keep digging. I'm gonna grab some tools. Using our toolkit here, looks like we're able to remove some of these screws. Uh, where'd that go? There it is. This is gonna be really interesting. I don't think anyone's ever seen inside one of these before. Okay, here we go. You ready for this? Carefuling. Ooh. Look at that. We've got like some of this fire retardant, <laughs> fireproof material. We've got some Kapton tape. Yeah, we've got a little bit of Kapton tape here. Looks like it's kind of coming off. Got a battery management board in here. Um, I'm gonna poke at this here. I want to. I don't want to do anything that's gonna cause any problems, but I want to see what's inside here. So I'm gonna grab a rug or something so I can get down on the floor. Last time I got down on the floor, I was sort of moving around on my knees, and apparently they didn't appreciate that. And both of my knees got really swollen, so I'm trying to be a little more careful. So I'm gonna find something to throw down on the floor. I'm actually kind of glad I looked in here. This tape could use a little bit of attention and or potentially reapplication. It doesn't really stick to this fire retardant material that well anyways. So we might have to come up with another alternative for that. Ooh, there's a lot of MOSFETs in there. Look at that. See all those MOSFETs peeking out through there? Hoo hoo. All right, let's see what's this board say. 
someone screenshot this and tell me what it is. We've got, uh, of course it's upside down, but it looks like, there we go. Uh, PCM 24S100-421 B-3, uh, something, something, something. So, interesting. Let me, uh, let me keep digging here. All right, we are clearly into the danger zone here now. Um, I'll keep these wires from brazing on anything. But check this out. We've got uh, something going on here. Hang on here, this lighting situation is not ideal. Yeah, so we've got um, rows upon rows and rows of MOSFETs. And, uh, oh, if we take a peek down here, it looks like we've got little individual cells. Yeah, it looks like we've got rows of cells down here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, not sure the size of those at all, and I'm not gonna dig into this thing any further than this because, um, well, warranties and safety and such. This thing, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Is that a heater? Do you see this, uh, this yellow thing on top here? I mean, obviously there's like some Kapton tape on it, but I don't know if that's insulation or what that is. Yeah, and you can see here, a main power wire comes in, goes around and splits off to all these little cables here. And those appear to connect. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so all the positive wires come in from this cable and it looks like they connect directly up to the cells. So our power comes from here. These all go down here and connect to all the individual cells. And then it looks like our battery management is running on the negative side. Now, I know there's some of you out there that are watching this that are saying, yes, the pixies actually dance from negative to positive. That's not the argument here. I'm just saying it's interesting how this is connected. Looks like we've got, I'm assuming these are all current sensing shunts down here. Uh, let's see what some of this writing says. I'm just gonna go ahead and scan around this board and you guys can look at this and make your own decisions on things. And we've got, let's see here. Okay, so I think we've got to figure it out. Power goes directly to the cells down here. Then we've got all these little sensor cables here, which I believe are for equalization. Then it looks like we've got some thermal couples. We've got one that goes down into the pack and then one that attaches to the side of this battery management. And this battery management device, whatever it is, is packed completely full of MOSFETs. Big, beefy ones. There's four rows of them here, and they're all attached to all this. Each of these here. It looks like this battery management controller is set up for one additional row, so we could have five rows of them in there. I'm assuming that's based on voltage. Oh yeah, because they do have a 48 volt version of this chair. Although they're probably using a different board for that. But anyways, so we've got all of our wires down here sensing voltage on each of the cells. And let's see how many wires we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What was the label on this thing? I remember how many volts? 24. Google, what's 24 divided by nine? 24 divided by nine. The answer is approximately 2.667. Okay, so that was 24. I think this thing was said 25 or 26 volts. So, interesting. Well, there you go. Here's some never before seen footage of the inside of one of these lithium batteries that, um, well, you know what the company is. <laughs> it, uh, it looks as uh, EVE would say, skookum is frig. I mean, uh, this seems like a pretty safe looking little thing. I mean, we got all sorts of current shunts in here and there's a pile of solder there, but it looks like it's all connected good. We've got a couple temperature sensors. I would like to see more temperature sensors. It looks like we just have the one going down to the battery pack. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, our battery, the cells connect up to this side of the battery management, go out on this side through the output. We've got a whole bunch of switching, 
some uh, heat sinking going on here. Yeah. Well, there you go. I hope this demystifies some of the things that people are concerned about with these batteries. Obviously lithium, safety, whatever. I'm happy to see that there is something going on in here though. Obviously there'd have to be to keep this thing working, but according to them, they've never had to warranty one of these batteries. So whatever's going on in here seems to be pretty reliable. A few thoughts on this thing. It does seem to be built fairly substantially. It's in a metal box. I'm gonna check to see if it's aluminum or steel. Uh, I'll get on my magnet and try that. Magnet on a stick, battery box. Yeah, it's steel. Cool. That'll do. It seems to have pretty good heat dissipation on the battery management controller. Lots of MOSFETs in there. They're really big, mo big MOSFETs. It has two temperature sensors. I would like to see more temperature sensors, but eh, whatever. I mean, some's better than none. And I mean, there's Kepton tape on everything. They've got the fire retardant shields on all sides of the box. I couldn't tell what was on top of it. I don't think it was a heater. I don't know if they do that or not. I don't know who manufactures these things. It would be kind of cool if it did have a heater in there because of really cold temperatures. Um, it's actually better to use a little bit of electricity from the battery to keep the pack warm so it works better. I mean, you can take a note from Tesla on that. That's what they do in their cars. They're heated and cooled. The one thing is though, there's no conformal coating or water ingress protection anywhere on this battery. You do not want to get this battery management controller wet. <laughs> if any water gets in there, you're going to have problems. Now granted, there's a lot of circuit protection and stuff built in there, but that's the one thing you got to be careful about with this thing. You do not want water getting in there. It would be nice to see some O-rings or other things on the end caps on this thing. Actually, looks like the only this one end comes off. And we've got these straps that are attached with fasteners. The, the big Anderson connector, connector here on the top has through hole mounting. It, it, it would be nice to see some water ingress protection. I think that's kind of getting picky maybe, but I don't know. Overall, I think this seems like a pretty decent thing. Hopefully this gives some of you information that you're looking for. There's been a lot of speculation around the internet as to what's actually going on in these things. And I'm sure there's gonna be more speculation now that you've seen some of this stuff. So I don't know, take this information as you will. I'm just really curious to get it out there so that people know what's actually going on. While we're in here screwing around with this thing, we've got this uh, external circuit breaker that they sort of plug in here. So let's see what's going on inside this little thing. Yeah, what do you know? It's just a waterproof ignition protected circuit breaker with little rubber butt caps over the uh, bolts. Huh, well there you go. So we do have 120 amps of external battery protection. This looks like, uh, let's see, load. I'll have to look up the schematics on this. I don't know if this is isolated or just for, because there's two terminals on each side. I don't know if that splits up the load or why exactly it looks like that. But um, yeah, so we got that at least. So that's something. This, I just put it on here for testing purposes. What I'm gonna do is get another set of Anderson connectors and I'm going to wire up a short pigtail that I can plug in line with all this. I'm gonna mount this thing inside of a box, get it sealed up good. And then for the data logger, the cables on it are not very long. So I'm gonna have to extend those cables as well. And right now, this just kind of like slides down in here and it sort of like flexes the side of the box. I don't know if that's like how it was supposed to be in here, but you can see there's scrape marks on the side of this box from this frame, from this being slid in and out with this in here. There isn't any more height that we can really take advantage of in here. Actually, where's the lid? Here's our lid. The chair came with this little tool kit as well and kind of the same thing when you try to put it in here it flexes the side out and i don't really like that we do have a charging oh, hang on here okay we've got this adapter uh which let's see here 24 volt lithium charger bypass cable disconnect circuit breaker allow battery to remain disconnected 
to allow it to reset, connect the charger bypass. Okay, so this lets you charge up the battery independent of the chair. And it's interesting that it says it takes an hour or more for the battery management system to reset. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna look up and uh, see if I can find some specs on that BMS that's in here. And then we're gonna get this mounted a little bit better. I don't like the idea of this thing flopping around in here. And this battery, while it is heavy and it is strapped down, it's kind of, I don't know, I might cut some little uh, closed cell foam blocks and put them in here that are just the right size, just to keep it from sliding around. As you know me, stuff that rattles around drives me absolutely insane. And I'm a little bit picky about electrical wiring and stuff like that too. Nothing against anyone or whatever in the past that owned this or built it or whatever, but I just want to give it a little bit of extra protection and or OCD abatement in my mind. Now uh, this is the cable that connects uh, the daughter board or the ammeter clamp, if you will, to the rest of the circuitry for that data logger. It's uh, six wires. Each one actually has its own wire code on it. I've just gone ahead and put a couple of Sharpie marks on here because I'm going to cut this apart and extend the thing because this is not nearly long enough to get from inside that battery box up to somewhere useful on the chair. This is a lot of work. Um, I've got four of the six done, and once I get all these together, I'm gonna get out the uh, multimeter and verify that they're all connected properly, because one of these wires being reversed could very definitely let the smoke out of the box. Now, for those of you that are wondering if extending these wires is going to affect the readings or data, because we're adding a few feet of wire, all of the data measurement and everything is actually done on the little daughter board that has the coil on it. So these are just power and data communication lines and relay control lines that go up to the display. So we're not gonna get voltage drop or anything like that since all the actual processing and metering and everything is done on that little tiny circuit board. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, two more wires to go and we're set. Okay, I think we are done with this cable extension. Now, some of you may notice that I cut the flat cable at an angle, and what that does is it staggers all of the solder joints so they're not right next to each other. And when you get a bunch of solder joints that are right next to each other, they tend to all stack up and make a great big um, bundle, as it were. So by staggering them just a little bit, it sort of moves each solder joint down just a little. But yeah, as you can see here, I think, uh, I think this is pretty good. I'm gonna grab the voltmeter real quick and we're gonna double check and make sure these are all set the way they're supposed to be. And then we'll be ready to put this whole mess into the chair. Got our voltmeter here. I'm just gonna go ahead and electrical tape these cables down to the table <laughs> because there isn't really a good way to hold any of this stuff while we're doing the probing, so we'll just do one of these. There we go. Now we're gonna be using the diode check mode on this thing. And let's see here, select. Got our beeper activated. So anytime these two probes are connected together, the meter will beep. There you go. So that makes this testing pretty easy. Just put one wire on one pin and another, or you put one probe on one pin and the other probe on the other. And we get a beep. And then for each one, I'm gonna check all the other wires to make sure we don't have cross connection. So this should beep, there we go. And just basically repeat the process. All right, we are all set. I actually need to go get something to eat. 
I'm gonna run inside. I've still got several pounds of bacon that need to be consumed. I'm gonna go uh, take a break for a few minutes and uh, get some food, caffeine, and we'll revisit this. We have lots of little itty bitty connections. Now is the time to take the electrical tape and make this into sort of a wiring harness. Give it a little bit more protection. I do believe we have most everything installed. We've got the chair here. I've got uh, most of the wiring set up. It turns out I actually need to make this wire even longer because I didn't consider the seat elevator and having to route the wiring and all that. So for now, we're just gonna have this wire hanging out that plugs into the control box and display. And I'm just going to ghetto attach it to the side of the chair for now, just for our testing purposes. Eventually though, I am going to have to do something a little bit different here. I might get a box to put this inside of and mount it somewhere on the chair. I could put it on the back, but then I couldn't see it while I'm running around. And I think that's kind of the point of this whole thing is being able to keep an eye on everything. Right now it's showing 17 amp hours available because this thing's kind of interesting and uh, very Chineseium. It has sort of a pamphlet that comes with it. It doesn't quite explain how the operation works. I need to figure out how to calibrate it because right now the chair is fully charged. So I need this to show, well, I don't know how this works. I think it's only based off the power that goes into it. I suppose I could reset it. I don't know. I think technically the way this thing works is it keeps track of the power going in and then the power going out. Anyways, regardless, I um, should probably hop in the chair and test it out. Let me turn on the lights here. I'll power up the chair and then we'll turn on our lights and you'll see our voltage or the amperage usage you can see here shows 1.5 amps and how many watts are being pulled. So kind of an interesting thing, but I think I should hop into this chair and uh, actually run around and see what kind of power we're using. Eh, this wire is inconveniently short. Um, I guess I could zip tie this on here. Actually, hang on a second. Just for the purposes of testing here, I just put a little daub of hot glue on the corner of it. Now in theory, it's supposed to automatically turn on when it detects a load. There we go. Let's turn this thing up all the way. And do a little bit of running around here in the garage. Yeah, that blue line there is what I'm interested in, how many amps we're pulling. Ooh, got up to 83 amps there for a second. I should probably go outside to continue this. There's a limited amount of space in here. Yeah, okay. So the amp hours that it's showing remaining is left over from when I had this thing plugged in when it was charging. I need to figure out how to reset this thing, I think. And uh, then we can go from there. But anyways, keep an eye on this curve. I'm gonna go full throttle and then go straight for a little ways. Now we're gonna turn. Yeah, and you can see the amp hours there are going down. Hmm, interesting. A wee bit more research is needed here. <clears throat> There's gotta be someone online that's gotten one of these little meters and has done some testing, or maybe there's an actual manual somewhere for this thing, but I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is extend the wire out, get this thing mounted up the end of the joystick where it's more usable, and then we'll go from there. I think I figured out the settings. I've got it set to 100 amp hours, which is what the battery's rated at. We've got it reset, and it shows the battery. Whoops, oh no, I hit the flunk button. There we go. And um, yeah, 100 amp hours. So now as I move around, in theory, that number should go down. Yeah, there we go. Now if I plug the thing into a charger, uh, that should start going back up. So this is where the testing is gonna come in, is to see how accurate this thing actually is. But 
finally figured out with the directions how to get it set up at least. It's um, middle of the night right now. I figure what better time though to open some viewer mail than right now. Uh, mostly because I'm really curious what's in here. It's addressed to totally normal care of Crocodile Dan D. <laughs> um, the person that sent me this told me, well, he didn't tell me what it was, and he said it might be handy, and I might already have a few of these laying around. Absolutely no idea what's in here. It, um, it's got some heft to it, so uh, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. I'm super curious. Ah, oh, let me get this off of here. Actually, I've been eyeballing these. I have not purchased them though. So yes, thank you. First, um, this is the first to my collection, a tapered reaming set. So these are basically, um, they're not drill bits, but uh, like when I was working on that other chair and I was trying to make the holes just a little bit bigger to fit that joystick mount. Uh, these would have been really handy. High carbon steel, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and it's got a, ah, there's T-handles built in here. So what we have is a fairly sharpened thing with a hole in the top, and you put these little T-handles in here, and then you can use this to enlarge uh, holes that need to be drilled or whatnot. We've got two different sizes here, sort of a narrow one, uh, a slightly thicker one, and they both have these uh, little T-handles. And this one has a 3 8 drive um, socket sort of thing on the end of it, or you can put a wrench on there or whatever. So yes, awesome, thank you. These are going to be very handy. I actually just got a new tool bag and there'll be a perfect spot in there for those. Okay, the next one I'm uh, relatively confident is coffee, which is good. That, that five pound bag that I got, um, I've got probably a quarter of it left, so I've gone through three quarters of the bag. This one, it looks like it fell off a truck a few times, <laughs> but it's actually been sitting over here for a little while because, uh, well, I don't know, I'm exquisitely lazy, but I'm opening this out of necessity right now because I need to make some coffee, and he said he sent me some, so I would like to... Tr <laughs> it's... It's another five pound bag. <laughs> oh my gosh. You said it wasn't a five pound bag. That's, <laughs> that's so much coffee. Um, oh man. Okay, so this is, uh, loss, uh, whatever that says. I think, I think he sent me a bag of this before that was smaller, and I'm pretty sure I said I liked it, because I remember pointing to this on the camera and not knowing how to pronounce it. <laughs> this is so much coffee. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh... It's kind of funny, there's a joke, running joke here in the house. And I've taken over a corner of the kitchen. They call it Dan's Coffee Bar. So I have all my coffee grinders and cold brewers and coffee makers and things like that. Um, ah, cool. This is going to be really handy. And this, these are sharp. <laughs> yeah, so there's a little bit of sharpness going on there. Awesome. All right, well, thank you for the stuff, everyone. Um, I have my P.O. box in the description down below of all the more recent videos. Just in case, for whatever reason, you happen to have something that you don't want. Why is this not charging? Ah, there we go. I was all worried there for a second that my MacBook had broken because the light wasn't on on the charger. I think it just got some... Oh, yeah, I got some gunk in there. There we go. Yes, if there's anything that you need to dispose of that you think I might like, um, 
addresses down below. Also, I'm going to be starting another series of uh, drone dropping. So if you have some small items, not cameras, I mean, unless they're broken, but if you feel led to send me any random items that you want to have dropped from 1,600 feet in the air, go ahead and send it to me and make sure you put on the box <laughs> or inside the box that it's for drone dropping. That's something we're going to be starting here soon uh, just because it's fun to destroy things. Actually, it's not all going to be destroying things. I'm going to try and do some other stuff too, like um, trying to drop a basketball through a hoop from that high in the air. Just some other mindless stuff because, you know, drones.